Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow uh, just uh, turned green. That's up seven. Nasdaq's up 36. S&P's up six and a half. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve does an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also, has a great newsletter, the Mastering Probability. Now, the way you get Mastering Probability, you come over to our website at TFNN. You go into newsletters, you'll see Master Probability right there. You can subscribe to Master and Probability for $149 for one month. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199. You can get it for a year for $5.93, which is a savings uh, for $11.95, and save $593, which is a savings of 33%. Great newsletter, folks. And as you know, Steve uh, was the number one market timer, according to Timers Digest, in 2019. And in 2020, folks, okay, the bottom line is that you got to get the decimal pen out because we got to go three decimals, okay? And he missed it by, he's number two. What do you, he missed it by what? Is it, is it three one hundredths of a, uh, I, it, it's sad. Oh, it's sad. It's great. Yeah. Congratulations, man. But well, Tommy and I are looking at it like, you got to be kidding me. Uh, yeah, it's three decimals, right? Uh, yeah, Point. it is. It is. I told you when we were talking last week that it was going to be touchy, you know, yeah. that it was that it was really going to be close. So right. uh, I, the 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 action on the anyways, look, you know what? It, it, it is what it is. It doesn't it oh, doesn't yeah. necessarily. Listen, it's very unusual that anyone gets it two years, folks, uh, it yeah. even gets close to it. So yeah, yeah the, and right. that w it would have been nice. But, um, you know, the reality is, is that it's a it, it, the run lasted about two and a half years. So that as and which is which is a big run. Huge. Um, you know, and the the great news is, Tom, is that you've created this platform that allows myself, Larry, David, Basil, <laughs> yourself, um, you know, and, and others to really share with you tools that work so that we can kind of cut through uh, a lot of the noise in the media out there and just be able to interpret the charts. And, and what I really love about what you've done is that, you know, there's there's no assignment that gets sent out to everybody and says, you know, we need to, you know, we need to do things a certain way or we need to be on the same page. You you allow everybody to give their interpretation in reading the markets and, and what they mean. So uh, so for, for that, really, the kudos are to you. Um, well, you know, for you for, guys for, are all doing the work. I appreciate it, though. No, no yeah, doubt. Yeah. No, no doubt. it's it's yeah. and, and it's great because uh, look, the, the great thing is, is that uh, we use we use our standard tools, but the markets are always changing. You talked about sure. lots of uh, lots of volatility uh, to anticipate in 2020 in the uh, gold market is probably going to be all of the markets. And then the last time that you and I spoke last Monday, we were talking about all the diff my concern about 2020 and the patterns that we're setting up there. Yes. And I wasn't really sure what the trick might be to move us into the potential of a 2020 bear market. But last Friday, um, and you'll see as we go through these charts here, which I wanted to talk to you and our listeners about war, uh, its impact on the stock market, because there's enough situations where we can go back so that we can understand uh, what, what could unfold here. And that's what's really important. So, cool. you know, it, so, the, so that's what I want to take a look at between the just simply historically and specifically with regard to the Dow, how the market uh, has behaved as 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 attentions here are a little bit um, heightened, Elevated, so to speak. Yes. So, yeah, so, yeah. So let me actually get over to to uh, where's, where's my cursor. Let me get to these actual charts here so we can begin taking a look at war and its impact on the uh, stock market. So here's the stock market. Now, the stock market, as you know, and you've, you've said this many times, it, it absolutely hates uncertainty. Well, it, it truly hates the uncertainty of war. And bottoms, what I have found as we go through some of these charts here, what you'll see is that bottoms don't form until the market senses a positive resolution to the dispute. Uh, um, in the den, they're not seeing it. Maybe the guys in the uh, production room can get this uh, chart up here or some of the others. Do you guys but have so, Steve's chats, Al? So, so uh, and I'm sure they're on Tiger TV. But so bottoms don't form until the market senses a positive resolution to to a dispute. So whether so whether it's a war, whether it's a skirmish, whatever it might be. So here go, we go back to World War One, uh, just to uh, sort of back into. 
1914, just so folks can get a feel for this. So here, we let's take this all the way to World War II. Let's take a look at Pearl, the, the attack on Pearl Harbor yes. on December 7th. And so we can see where the market was at. And it was really the Battle of the Coral Sea on May 7, 1942, where there was a, where stock investors sensed a, a potential of a positive resolution. It doesn't have to be the end of the war, what have you. It's just about, when I take a look at the charts here, it's really about the market sensing some type of positive resolution. And if we take a look at the Korean War, we can see here where the North Korean People's Army crossed the border back on June 25th, 1950, what the stock market was doing. We can see that it was when Task Force Smith uh, stalled the North Korean uh, Army, uh, that the market sensed a, uh, a positive turn. Pretty and wild, hence, huh? Yeah. Uh, it is, yeah. yeah, and hence the bottom. And that's really, so So this is how we can use news events versus the way that people might be interpreting things um, in the market. Here's the Cuban Missile Crisis. And so we can see when, when it began, when the Cuban Missile Crisis is over, and then the market just simply continued there on a nice bull run. If we take a look at the Persian Gulf War, we can see what the market was doing when the Iraqi forces uh, invaded Kuwait. We can see when the reserves were called up. We can see when Operation Desert Storm was. And so it's just about being able to sense uh, a positive resolution. Here's 9-11. Now, I, I have a whole set of charts. I couldn't find them all. And, and But what I can share with folks is that terrorist attacks are different than wars. And when we go back and we actually take a look at terrorist attacks, the moves typically are over rather quickly. I don't know the reason behind that, Tom, but uh, you know whether it was that uh, the, the one attack in uh, France, Ebdo or something like that, when they yeah. walked in and shot up. Right? But if you go back and you take a look at terrorist attacks, they respond differently than actual uh, wars here. That's great it, information to know, though. That's, that's it, it, it is. It yeah. is because we know, unfortunately, we're going to have more terrorist attacks and we're going to see the market, uh, you know, move lower. But to be the ability to be able to differentiate the terrorist attack from an actual military incursion, a war, what have you. Uh, here is the Iraqi invasion. Here's where we see the uh, mission accomplished, uh, so to speak, out there back in 2003. Um, and so that threat of war is occurring right at a time when you and I have taken a look at it. Last week we said, hey, if this were to work like this, the actual January seasonal high would be today. Now, I'm not calling that today because there's other factors that you've talked about in your show, things that I talked about in my show this morning. And, and on Friday, what the market did um, was it generated for me a confirmation of, of uh, top. And that top was the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. Here's the Yes Mini. It also had a 1 to 1.618 A to B equals CD. And it does that. I wait for some type of bearish reversal candle. We got that on Friday. Yeah. So the question would be, is now the time to sell? Has the change in trend occurred? And my answer to that is no to both. And the reason is, you know, I use these wonderful tools. You brought uh, uh, John Logan and his group into uh, the fold here. And once I saw those tools and how they worked, they're really great for being able to when, when there's a topping pattern that's in place, it's resp the responsibility of sellers to push price down to support. And we take a look at this chart here going back in the beginning of 2019. You'll see that it moves just back to, and these are just the bottom of the profiles that I have out here. Yes. Price must break through support in order for there to be a change in trend. And uh, I realize we're just about to run out of time here, but if we take a look at what has transpired last Friday, we've got a brand new market profile in the ES Mini. It's 32.16. Price must close below that for there to be any possible change in trend. Gotta love it, man. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Well, listen, man, congratulations again. Thanks, Ama sir. Amazing feat, no doubt about it. Folks, come over to our website at TFNN. Find a newsletter, see Master in Probability. Check it out, 30-day money-back guarantee. Steve, have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, sir.